Hey, what's going on guys? So today I just picked up a uh, used Mortal Kombat 2 Generation 1 or 2, I'm not sure which one. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you guys through the steps to mod this thing. Now, the way I'm going to do this is from what I have found to be the best possible way you can do this and the easiest, fastest, cheapest method. So there are some parts you're going to need. Um, with the generation one and two cabs, um, and I'll link everything in the description, you're gonna need a LCD HDMI video board. So basically that's this piece right here. And what it'll allow is for you to connect HDMI into the, uh, the monitor. So you, the way it comes stock, you cannot hook up HDMI into the monitor, so you will need this. Uh, other parts you're gonna need, you're gonna need a button and joystick kit. It's about, oh, I'd say about $44 on Amazon. Now the one I got, I got the mixed bag where you get all different colors because I'm gonna try to keep the original colors going on the cab here. And then it also includes your joysticks and then your little USB encoders. Don't get discouraged looking at this. I promise you, it is very easy to install. Um, you're also gonna need the arcade box. So this little computer right here, also on Amazon, this is what's gonna allow you to have all the games. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's a nice little device because it comes preloaded. It's got 30,000 or 33,000, something like that, games on it. You're also gonna need speakers. So I picked these up from Amazon as well. These, I think, were like eight bucks. And then um, you're gonna need one of these too. If you don't, you won't be able to plug everything in. So you're gonna need a surge protector, um, and that's about it. And then a few other little things on the side. You got your Velcro and some zip ties. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start showing you guys step-by-step step how you can take this thing here and modify it to have 30,000 games. Here we go. Okay, so first thing you're gonna need to do is unscrew the back. Looks like there's about three screws. Grab here and pop this thing out of the way. So you should see something like this. You got the ribbon cable there and then the uh, stock PCB board. So what I'm gonna do is remove the two screws on each side here, one here and one over here and remove that ribbon cable and pop that out. Here we go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start installing the new LCD board. I would like to install it on the wood. You don't want to install it directly to metal right here. I'm going to have to put a piece of foam back here. While I'm waiting for my, my glue gun to get hot, I'm going to go ahead and install the ground wire. Here, I'm going to take the screw. It actually comes with one with these LCD boards, which is nice. I'm gonna press it through the hole there. And then all I've gotta do is take the ground, slip it over the top, comes with a little nut. You're just gonna screw it over the top there. So now we've got our ground. Looks like the glue is hot. Okay, let's do that. The next thing I need to do is install some velcro on the back here and then go ahead and velcro it on to this little foam pad that i made okay so the next step is going to be to remove the control panel on the other side and start installing our buttons and joysticks so i'm going to go ahead and just remove this ribbon cable because you will not need this and i'm going to flip it around Remove the four screws. Pull it out. The next step is gonna be remove these. Now go ahead and remove the plastic cover. And then the next step is gonna be flip it over. 
And you're gonna need to start unscrewing all of these from the back. Remove that black plastic cover. You really don't need this anymore. All this stuff, we're not gonna need any of it. We're pretty much just gonna replace it all. So I'm gonna start popping all these wires out and then to get the buttons out, you just squeeze and press. For the joystick, there's just four screws. Save the screws. And there you have it, there's your joystick. Okay, almost done. Now we got these two wires hanging off here. This is for the on, off, and volume. We're not gonna be using those anymore, so I'm just gonna pop those out. And now you've got a clear board. Just leave these in, they no longer have any function. So what I'm planning to do is I'm gonna add a select button here and a select button here. So I will have to remove the speaker. For the pad here, I want more buttons down here as well. So I'm gonna put a button at the top, a button at the bottom. And if you guys want to do that, you can. It just gives you more buttons uh, so you can play other types of games without having to like plug in a controller. You can, uh, games that require more buttons, it's just gonna make it easier. Drilling little pilot holes for where I'm going to uh, put the new button. So you can see I started this one. I got this little hole here. I'm gonna do this one up here. I gotta do up here, here, and here. I actually had a um, little cardboard cutout of the actual button size here. So what I did is I just lined this up about where I'd want the button and I marked the middle and, um, and then marked on the board. I'm gonna be using this step bit, which I also bought on Amazon. And um, I'm just gonna go nice and slow and easy and get each one of these holes all drilled out. And then we'll start installing the new buttons. button in. All right guys so I went ahead and drilled all the holes so now I have start and select up at the top and then I also added two more buttons um, on the panel here on each side so two this top one and this bottom one and then this top one over here and then this bottom one here. So now I'm going to go ahead and start dropping in all the buttons. So the first buttons I'm going to go ahead and install are the the yellow buttons. These are going to go right down here Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and show you guys how these screw in. It's pretty easy. There's just one plastic washer that goes on the back and just screws on. So here's my washer. I'm gonna go ahead and just screw it on in. And that's all you do, guys. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drop them all in and screw them all up. Here is the uh, board with all the buttons now installed in it. So the next thing I need to do before I install the joysticks is you need to take the little plastic cover and you're going to need to line it up um, and then you're going to need to mark about the center right here on each one of these new buttons and then you're going to have to drill that out now if you didn't want to keep this piece you could always just remove it and not use it at all okay guys so i'm going to go ahead and start drilling the holes so i got my hole saw I got a board that I'm going to stick under there and I marked out where each one of the holes are going to be. So you can see those little dots that I put there. So I'm going to go ahead and take my drill and start putting in the new holes now. Just take your time, go nice and easy, don't crack it. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I uh, put all the holes in. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay it down, line everything up, make sure it works. Looks like everything's lining up pretty good. So the next step is to install the joysticks. We're gonna need to flip this thing over. And I went ahead and I just put the um, plastic cover to the side for now. We're gonna go ahead and grab our joystick. You wanna make sure when you drop these things in, see the little plug? You either want the plug facing up or down on each side. You don't wanna have one down and then on the other side you have this one up. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that plug is facing the same way. So if you drop it in this way, it also needs, the other one needs to be dropped in the same direction with the plug facing the same way. Literally all you're gonna to need to do is just kinda of 
eyeball about the center when you look on the other side and then screw them in. Okay guys, so I have the first joystick in. I just had to place it in there, flip it around. I made sure that it was lined up about in the middle of the hole. And then I took a permanent marker and with my hand, I just marked inside these two spots. Once I made the little pilot holes, I went ahead and drilled the actual screws in. And then um, the bottom is easy. You, once this is lined up and these two are in, you just go ahead and drill your, your pilot holes on the bottom and then screw them in. Okay guys, so I got the joysticks in. The next thing we're gonna need to do, let me flip it over, is we gotta wire this thing up. You're gonna need to grab these two um, USB encoders that came with the joystick button kit. There should be two of them in the bag. First thing you'll need is you're gonna need the wires. Let's go ahead and start by just plugging in the joysticks first. Once you've got that plugged in, you're gonna take this end and it's just gonna plug in right here on the end of the USB encoder. Once you've got that plugged in, we're gonna start wiring up these buttons. You just wanna do the exact same thing with this USB encoder on the other side. I'm gonna get the other joystick plugged in and then I'm just gonna start with one button at a time going uh, probably from this bottom one, we'll make this button one. All I'm gonna do is just go to the number one spot on the encoder. So wire goes to here, number one. And I'll come over here on the yellow button on this side and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a wire in and it's gonna go to the number one spot on this one. Then we could do this as button two, plug a wire in, we'll go to the two spot on this one here, and then we'll do the same thing with this button here as number two, we'll go to the number two spot on this one here. So we're just gonna go back and forth, doing the exact same thing until we fill this whole thing up with all the wires. Okay guys, so there you have it. That is the, the board completely wired up. So we are done with this part. The next thing we need to do is drop it on in and uh, start getting the arcade box and everything else hooked up. This is the completed board here. The uh, button joystick kit came with these um, USB cords. You're gonna wanna go ahead and plug those each in and then set this thing in and you can uh, start to screw it down. see the uh, cords are dropped in now we just need to go grab the arcade box and 
mount it. I'm just going to mount it to the side right there with some uh, Velcro. So the next step here, I just mounted the arcade box. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Now we need to install the speakers. For the speakers, I didn't mount them yet, but what I'm probably going to end up doing is just gluing them in. Um, before I do that, though, I want to test them. I, I want to see how they sound and make sure they are uh, in the right spot. Hey, guys, so I went ahead and I glued down my speakers here at the bottom just using a hot glue gun. Um, once you've got the speakers glued in, you're just going to want to plug it into your surge protector here. Um, so I got that plugged in now. And then the um, volume is going to go to, you're going to plug the speaker RCA jack into the far right uh, slot down here. So I got that hooked in. And then I went ahead and I uh, plugged in my HDMI from the monitor down into the arcade box over here. And then um, I've got my, I need to plug in my power. This is the uh, original power source that comes with the Arcade 1UP. I'm just going to plug it into the LCD board up here. And I've already got it plugged down, down plugged in down here at the bottom. And again, I, I went ahead and hot glued all this stuff down. I ran out of Velcro, which I normally would want to Velcro everything down so I can, if something breaks, I can remove it. Um, but I went ahead and just used hot glue. Um, so this is all secured this is in everything looks to be pretty secured and ready to go got the speakers in got the lcd board all hooked up hdmi is in power cords are all hooked up the power to the uh arcade box over there is plugged in comes with its own power source now all i gotta do is plug this thing in and uh get the controls all set up okay guys so i want to just show you real quick for the um little usb encoders I went ahead and I just hot glued them down so they wouldn't be in the way. And then for the buttons right here, the on off and the volume button, I just went ahead and super glued those in. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to put on the plastic cover and then I need to put in the little uh, ball tops. Okay guys, so I've got the uh, cover all on. All I gotta do is put this cover back on. I went ahead and made the hole down at the bottom bigger to thread that through. So we're gonna go ahead and power this thing up next. Okay guys, so I went ahead and fired it up. Um, I did initially have some issues with player one and player two. What you're gonna wanna do to get these set up correctly is you're only gonna wanna have one, one side plugged in at a time. So I plugged this side in into the arcade box and then um, when the, when the screen first popped up, it was the uh, configured controller setting screen. Now, you can go to it by clicking the start button and going down to controller settings and then configure a controller. So from here, this is where I could manually do it. When you first hook it up, it will, it'll pull this up automatically. It's gonna ask for you to hold down a button. So you'll hold down a button and then it's gonna want you to configure um, each one of your buttons for gamepad one. So I did that for gamepad one. And then um, how I did it is I just did A, B, X, Y, I think that's left trigger, right trigger, left shoulder, right shoulder, uh, obviously start and select at the top. Uh, and then for the joystick up, down, left, right, you can go through all those. Um, so I set gamepad one. Um, and then to skip the buttons you don't want to use, you just hold down a button and then it'll skip. You hold down a button and then it'll skip. So you do that until the very end where it says it wants to know what you want for your hotkey button, which I just went ahead and clicked select. And um, even if you mess that up and you skip that, just hit OK or, or A and then it'll, it'll bring up something that says you didn't select a hotkey. Just hit A again and it'll automatically set the uh, start and select as your way to exit game. So if you click start and select together twice, it will exit a game for you. Once you did gamepad one, then you're gonna have to plug this one in into the arcade box in the back and then go through the same setup, go to configure your controller and set up gamepad two. 
So once you have GamePad 1 and 2 set up, then you're ready to start going into some of the games. Now, when I initially set up the controllers, uh, after I did GamePad 1 and 2, then I went into a game and everything was backwards. GamePad 2 was actually player 1. So what I had to do is start all over again. So I had to, I, I went ahead and unplugged both and I swapped where they were on the back of the arcade box. So once I swapped them, I swapped uh, uh, the player one side, I think it was down or up, I can't remember. I flipped it and I left that one unplugged and I did the same thing. I went through the buttons on this one, plugged the other side in, went through the buttons on this one. And then to, in order to make sure it saves so you don't, you don't uh, have to do it again, you're gonna wanna restart the system. So what I did is I just hit the, the start button or select button and I just went to restart system and then it saved gamepad one and two so that I don't have to keep doing that over and over. So make sure you do a restart and not just a shutdown. So now the next thing I wanna show you guys is setting up each system here so that you get full screen when you're playing your games. So I'm gonna go into MAME here and to enter, you just click your A button. And um, what I'm gonna do now is show you guys some of the settings you're gonna wanna make sure you have. So I hit the, once I'm in the system, I clicked the select button, go down to advanced system options, I'm gonna click A. And now for Mortal Kombat, I had to change the emulator to the one you see here. Um, for some games, if they don't play right or they're messed up or they're not playing at all, you're gonna need to change the emulator and then try to play the game again until you get the correct emulator for the game. Now, this emulator plays pretty much all the games that I like, so I don't have to worry about changing it so much. Um, and then for the game ratio, you're gonna wanna set that to 16, to, 16 by nine. And then under bezels, you want that no, you don't want any bezels because you want full screen. Once you do that setup under each system, so like this is under main, you'll be ready to go. So I'm under main, I had to make sure I set that for this specific system. You'll have to do that for each one, Sega, Genesis. Okay, now when we're ready to go ahead and play a game, we've got the, we got full screen set up and everything we needed. We're gonna go into a game here, so I'm gonna click Mortal Kombat, since this is a Mortal Kombat 2 theme uh, arcade, and we're gonna test it out. I also wanna show you guys how to turn the volume up and down without having to open the back up and adjust the speakers. There's actually a little trick to this that I don't think a lot of people know. So let's get into the game here. So right now, here we are. This is player one, everything's correct. If I click start over here, there you go, you got player two. So player one and two are correct and working great. If you want to adjust the volume, you're gonna to need to click the select button and then push up or down on the joystick. This is actually a secret little hotkey button right here. So I'm gonna click this and I can raise the volume up or raise the volume down just by holding down select and pressing up or down on the joystick. Okay, this is a, a little secret that a lot of people don't know. Okay, so the speakers that I got, they were great. They're actually really loud. And um, if, if you want to play the game loud, you, now you can. You don't have to hook up any other buttons or have your amp sit on the outside if you bought an amp. Just get the computer speakers and then use the hotkey to turn your volume up and down. All right, guys, this is pretty much it. This thing is all done and complete. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.